if you ask somebody what a UFO field is, generally, this is what comes to mind. So when I tell them it actually looks more like this, they get completely confused. They don't understand why there's a field inside the UFO and also why this field continues to build. The simple answer is the outside and the inside are built with two totally different forms of energy. To better understand this, let's just go back to the basics. This is a simple toroidal structure, and if I ask you to build a field around it, this is the most common answer that you would give. A toroid builds magnetic field lines that go around it in one direction. The next step would look like this. You add wire to the toroid. Then it builds a field based on the wire and where it's placed. The problem is a toroid or a toroid with wire around it does not build a field that looks anything like this. So let's just start over. Is a toroid really what you want at the center of your UFO? And the answer simply is no. So if it's no, what do we need to put there instead? We need to build a flow pattern into the coil. And there's no better way to build a flow pattern than to use sacred geometry. So we start with simple shapes that we know that we can put into a toroidal fashion. Then we start to make them more complex. Each time that we make a shape, we put it into a wire form. Then we test it and we check the flow pattern. We see which ones match and which ones don't. For every new pattern we try, there's always a different outcome. How you connect them and how each one flows matters. We will start to see effects in everything that we do. Sometimes the energy flow can rotate a neodymium sphere magnet in circles. At this stage, we start to push it. We start to imagine this as a 3D shape. Then we start winding coils to build it into a 3D shape. We're looking for a flow. We're looking for energy to move from one point to the other. And what happens when one thing crosses another? And can we still rotate the neodymium magnet in it? The answer is yes. The question then becomes, can we add multiple magnetic fields inside of this coil in order to get something different to happen? This journey is not going to be an easy one. It's not going to come overnight. It's going to take a lot of time and a lot of patience and a lot of practice to get it right. Every single coil you build is different. Every single one has a different outcome. Every one of them creates a different field geometry. It's going to be important to log every single test as you do them so that you can refer back to the notes of the video footage that you took of each single test. This is not an easy task. It will take a lot of time. Please be patient. But the understanding at the end will be completely worth it. But once we have our field coil and we start to understand what it does, what else do we need to put into this device to get us our field flow? Because just this coil as it sits is not going to do it without adding certain effects to it. As we look back at our UFO structure and how the fields are built, we also have to realize we need different types of energy. We're going to need a magnetic field, and we're also going to need a static field. Let's start with the magnetic field. We can use a Tesla coil in order to create a magnetic field on the outside. However, the standard Tesla coil has a weak field that comes out of it. We need to strengthen that or thicken the field. The only way to do that is to rotate the Tesla coil. Now, at this point, I know what you're thinking. We could just put a wire on top of our Tesla coil, spin it, 